Hey guys, Lee here from Lady Lee's Home and in this video I'm going to show you real quick how you can lacto-ferment cauliflower. It's a nice way to preserve cauliflower for a little longer. It still needs to be stored in the fridge but a nice way to kind of keep a big, large amount of it um, in case you have it growing in the garden or you just came by a good deal on it at the farmer's market or something like that. Um, lacto-fermentation keeps the vegetable in like a fresh form so I usually just use it as a snack or uh, serve it as a side for a sandwich or just reach for it you know instead of reaching for a cookie or something like that so let's start from the beginning first of all what is lacto fermentation uh, fermentation in general is the process of using microorganisms such as bacteria or yeast um, to convert carbohydrates to alcohol or organic acid under anaerobic conditions. So there are a couple of um, types of fermentation, alcoholic fermentation, we won't get into it, but that's the process of making beer or wine um, or bread. And lacto-fermentation, which is what we're going to do here with this cauliflower, is the process of using bacteria to convert sugars um, in, into lactic acid. Uh, this bacteria, um, some, some form of it, is actually present in our digestive system naturally and is also present on the surface of plants. Um, lactic acid is a preservative that helps us preserve food uh, by preventing the growth of harm harmful bacteria. So really lacto-fermentation uh, which is the process that we're going to use here also increases the vitamin and enzyme level of the vegetable we ferment so we prevent the growth of harmful bacteria by using this good bacteria which helps us preserve the cauliflower for a little longer in a somewhat fresh form and we also add all these vitamins and um, good enzymes to our digestive system when we eat it. So it's really a um, win-win process to lacto-ferment a vegetable. And you can really do this same process that we're going to do here with the cauliflower with pretty much any other vegetable. There are a million different spices and um, all kind of herbs that you can add to a lacto-fermented um, vegetable just to add some flavoring but we're going to keep this pretty simple so what you will need for this recipe which is also posted on the blog and i will link to it in the description of the video be below um, we're going to need a cauliflower i think i was able to fit about um, medium maybe a small size head of cauliflower into a quart jar uh, we're gonna use some garlic cloves and you can see me here kind of crushing them but not peeling them. You can leave this, the, the skin on. And uh, we're gonna use some dill, fresh dill, and about a tablespoon of uh, bowl pickling mix. And then for the brine, we're gonna need non-chlorinated water and non-iodized salt. So the first thing that I did here is just um, separated the flowers of the cauliflower from the main stem and cut them just a little bit so I can uh, fill the jar with them and that's what we're doing here just adding some filling the jar with some of the cauliflower and then maybe like halfway through or something like that you add the garlic cloves put a few more of the cauliflower flowers and then add the fresh deal you can also use thyme or rosemary i actually think that i didn't have fresh deal so i grabbed some fennel from the garden so i think this is actually fennel and that should work just fine you can really get creative and do it a little bit differently each time and find the flavor that you like best Pack the vegetables well in the jar and um, 
Make sure that you leave about an inch or so of headspace. We will need some room for the fermentation weight. Uh, once all the vegetables are packed into the jar, add your spices. Um, here I'm using about a tablespoon of the ball pickling mix, which has a little bit of everything, but you can do just mustard seeds um, or, you know, chili flakes if you like it a little spicier or really there are many 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 different options to make their the brine we are going to add about a teaspoon of um, salt into a cup of water and it's it's very important that we are using non-chlorinated water and non-iodized salt so if you live in the city you might need to get distilled or spring water from the grocery store make sure that you're using either kosher salt or kenning salt or sea salt those are the three that i usually use i think in this case is kosher salt just give it a good stir to make sure the salt is dissolved into the water and then add the brine to the jar to cover the vegetables next add the fermentation weight and push it down a little bit just to make sure that all the vegetables are under the brine and lastly we will close the jar with the lid i'm using a plastic freezer lid you can also use a special fermentation lid i'm going to keep this jar inside a shallow bowl just because during the fermentation process some liquid will spill out so the bowl will catch it I'm gonna leave it on the kitchen counter at room temperature for about five to seven days for a quart jar. You will notice some bubble action and you'll notice that the brine becomes foggy during the fermentation process. Once it clears again, then that means that fermentation process is complete. If you're not using a special fermentation lid, make sure that you open or just twist open the lid once a day to allow the gases to escape and then close it back again. Make sure to store your fermented cauliflower in the fridge. And again guys, the full recipe is on the blog.